result of four million years of bioengineering. You think about this, what is your one attachment to Mother Earth all the time? Like, why do we need to wear shoes? Where have we forgotten the functionality of feet? For me, being barefoot is like my quick hack to just being connected with nature and present and in tune with what's going on around me. The human foot is an amazing structure. It's comprised of 26 bones, 33 articulations, each with six degrees of freedom of motion, 20 plus muscles, with 10 of them being in the arch in four layers. We evolved from creatures that were very much like chimpanzees that climbed trees, but also walked on the ground a little bit. First of all, our toes got shorter, our big toe got longer, our big toe evolved to lose its ability to, to be prehensile, we evolved a great big heel so we could land easily on our heel, and maybe most importantly, we evolved an arch in our foot that helps it stiffen it and also act as a spring. The reason why running became very important around two million years ago was to enable our ancestors to hunt. Our brains were enlarging and we needed meat, so we had to run down our prey. And the way we did it was through something called persistence hunting. Hunters will chase an animal, but animals can't cool while they gallop. So if you can make an animal gallop for long enough in the heat, you can actually drive it to a state of heat stroke. And since humans cool by sweating rather than panting, we are able to outrun even the largest animals out there on the African savanna. And we can still do that today. The foot is really very well designed by itself to withstand the loads of walking and running. It can move in many different ways. It allows it to be a rigid lever at times, it allows it to be a mobile adapter to uneven terrain at times, and to be spring-like and have spring-like characteristics. The truth is, for most of human existence, everyone was barefoot, until something happened around 40,000 years ago. You know, the creation of shoes was for a very simple reason. It was to protect our feet against elements that would damage them. People started to wear footwear about uh, 40,000 years ago. We can assume that it were skins wrapped around the feet and also sandals made out of organic material. Heels were first worn exclusively by men, mainly by horsemen. The heel kept their feet in the stirrups so they would not fall off their horse and they would be stable in their saddle. Through history, people have worn shoes that deform their feet and we only have to think about the Chinese lotus shoe. These uh, feet were put in a shoe that was six to seven centimeters long. When you're six, seven years old, you can still break the arch of your foot. It's like a plastic structure and you can mold it in the shape you want. Now we don't have to go back that far. If we look now in the shopping windows, we see a lot of shoes that do the same thing, but in a less extreme way. So we took this really great purpose, protection. And then we turned it into something else. We turned it into fashion. We turned it into correction. We turned it into uh, a lifestyle. Most modern shoes are rigid, pretty heavy, do not follow the shape of your own foot. Well, you don't really have a good feeling with the surface you're walking on. When you look at shod populations, people who have worn traditional shoes for years, you start to see a change in shape of their foot. You see a rigidity and a restriction in the natural movement. Most of the injuries I see in my office, including plantar fasciitis, stress fractures, Achilles tendonitis, I attribute to a disconnect that is created between the body and the ground, and I associate that with modern footwear. Experiments show that when you inhibit sensory information in the foot, People have problems maintaining stability and have problems maintaining balance. There's a reason, for example, that martial artists tend to go barefoot, right? They, they rely on that sense of information from their feet in order to maintain uh, stability and balance in really demanding situations. Pointed toes and elevated heels have been popular for centuries. But around 50 years ago, a new type of shoe appeared that would revolutionize the footwear market. So a lot of the changes that we associate with traditional shoes, cushion, heel toe drop, we can actually accredit back to the running boom in the 1970s. Bill Bowerman's designs were driven by observing athletes and designing products for performance. Bowerman was building shoes long before Nike, even before Phil Knight, the other co-founder of Nike, came along. He wrote a book called Jogging. That book helped start the whole running movement in the U.S. People were coming to Bowerman wanting to learn how to run, learn how to jog. A lot of those people that hadn't done that before started having problems with their Achilles tendon and their calf. 
Bowerman decided upon a half-inch heel lift based on what doctors were telling him. It was because they were trying to accommodate people that had worn dress shoes all their life. It wasn't from the athletes, it was more from the general public that needed a product that they could wear without discomfort. Beyond that, they started adding a counter, they started adding arch support. So they're adding band-aids to the effect of creating a problem with the heel. When you put your foot in a cushioned shoe, it's the same as putting your butt in a cushioned sofa. What you're doing is allowing everything to relax and get soft and deactivate. I think one of the causes of weak feet is the chronic support that we have from modern footwear. A carbon fiber plate, springs in the heel, air within the heel are trying to mimic a very intelligent system that we already naturally have. So what we end up with is this, this cocoon, you know, this, this sarcophagus that encompasses your foot and strips away all the natural movement that's there for a reason. Well, I think in today's world, fashion is first before performance. Fantastic. Is it gonna sell? Is it have that right look or appeal? The more established mainstream sports brands came at a time when it wasn't cool to wear sportswear. So they had to become storytellers and attach their shoes to icons in order to get people into footwear. The advances in technology and all of that has simply interfered rather than helped the foot. So you're buying technology and shoes to correct for problems caused by the shoe itself. So do our feet need support? Or is it time we learn to let our feet support us? An impulse sent from neurons in the toe is chemically identical to an impulse sent from neurons in the nose. Your feet are riddled with sensory neurons. This makes perfect sense because in an evolutionary environment, you want to know exactly what you're stepping on. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it sharp? Is it detecting any kind of danger? I believe that children should be barefoot as long as possible because this is when they are in their peak window of what's called neuroplasticity or brain and nervous system development. I don't think any kid wants to wear shoes. <laughs> Just kind of, they hate having to tie the laces, they hate having to put them on, they hate having to take them off. No. We're living longer, which is a good thing. But one of the big risks as we get older is falling. It's a very simple thing, but people aren't talking to the elderly about their feet. It's quite intuitive. Bring them closer to the ground and their balance improves. I definitely think that we would all benefit if we transitioned our footwear to more minimal footwear. And we just published a study showing that foot muscles in the arch get stronger when you simply walk in minimal shoes. You know, running barefoot is a skill just like swimming. You don't just jump into the pool and think, okay, I'm going to master swimming this afternoon and I'll be good to go. Then I'm going to swim the English Channel. You need time to build up strength, endurance, and technique. What I tell designers is that design product that follows the foot rather than product that the foot has to follow. So if you can design shoes and do that, then you're golden. A minimal shoe is exactly what you should be wearing. It is the least amount of protection that will make you comfortable. If people can realize that they can just strip away all this unnecessary junk and that they will immediately feel the benefits of it, that hopefully is the best message for our future.